around 55 million years ago, a dog-sized mammal lived in the dense forests of what is now North America. This animal, called Eohippus, or dawn horse, marks the beginning of an extraordinary journey, the evolution of horses as we know them today. Eohippus, also known as Hyracotherium, lived during the early Eocene epoch. It stood about 30 to 40 centimeters tall, similar to a small fox or terrier. With four toes on its front feet and three on the hind, it moved easily through soft forest floors. Its teeth were low-crowned and suited for eating soft leaves and fruit, not grasses. Fossils have been found in Wyoming and Europe, and its small brain and large eyes suggest it relied heavily on vision and agility to escape predators. About two million years later, Orohippus evolved. It was slightly taller, slimmer, and had a more developed leg structure, indicating an increase in running ability. Orohippus still had four toes in the front, but the outer toes were reduced, showing the beginning of the transition to a more efficient running stance. Fossil remains of Orohippus are also found in North America, especially in the Western United States. Epihippus, which appeared around 47 million years ago, had improved grinding teeth, with five low-crowned cheek teeth adapted to tougher vegetation. It shows a gradual shift in diet toward coarser material. Its limbs were more elongated and the foot structure continued to simplify. Fossils are found in Utah and Wyoming, showing it thrived in semi-open woodland environments. By 37 million years ago, in the late Eocene to early Oligocene, Mesohippus had emerged. This genus was about 60 centimeters tall at the shoulder, about the size of a sheep. It had only three toes on each foot, with the middle one becoming more dominant, and it had longer legs and a larger brain, suggesting increased speed and intelligence. Its teeth showed more complex ridges, preparing it for a diet of grasses and shrubs. Mesohippus fossils are widespread in the Great Plains region of the U.S. Meohippus, a close relative of Mesohippus, appeared shortly after, around 32 million years ago. It was slightly larger and had further dental specialization. This genus split into multiple evolutionary lines, some of which led to grazing specialists. Myohippus marks a time of evolutionary branching within the horse family. Fossils of Myohippus are found in North America, especially in South Dakota and Nebraska. By 23 million years ago, in the early Miocene epoch, horses like Parahippus developed higher crown teeth for grazing and had more efficient running limbs. It is considered a true transitional form between forest-dwelling and grassland-dwelling species. Parahippus fossils indicate it was adapting to open plains environments as forests retreated. One of the biggest evolutionary leaps came with Merakippus about 17 million years ago. It stood around one meter tall, was fully adapted to open grassland life, and had high-crowned ridge teeth for grinding tough prairie grasses. Merichippus had three toes, but it walked primarily on the enlarged middle toe, supported by a spring-like ligament structure similar to modern horses. Fossils are found all over North America, and this genus gave rise to many diverse horse branches. Around 16 million years ago, the Parian appeared, a side branch with three slender toes and long limbs. It spread into Europe, Asia, and Africa, and lived for nearly 20 million years. Its fossils are some of the most common in Eurasia, showing its success. Though not a direct ancestor of modern horses, the Parian showcases the evolutionary experimentation within the horse family. Pleohippus, from about 5 million years ago, was the first one-toed horse. It stood over 1.2 meters tall, with long, powerful limbs and deep-rooted molars. It looked strikingly similar to today's horse, though it may have had a more curved face. Pleohippus fossils are found in Nebraska, and it's considered the direct ancestor of Equus. Dinohippus, slightly younger than Pliohippus, was faster and more refined. It had a straighter posture and advanced limb structure. Some paleontologists think Dinohippus is the immediate precursor to Equus. Finally, about four to five million years ago, Equus evolved. This genus includes all modern horses, zebras, and donkeys. Equus had fully developed high crown teeth, a single toe, and the ability to run great distances. 
fossils have been found on every continent except Australia and Antarctica. During the Ice Age, equus migrated across the globe using land bridges. But about 10,000 years ago, horses went extinct in North America, likely due to a mix of climate shifts and human hunting. The species survived in Eurasia, where it was eventually domesticated around 6,000 years ago, most likely on the steppes of modern-day Ukraine or Kazakhstan. Horses were brought back to the Americas by Spanish explorers in the 1500s, reshaping human societies forever. Fossil evidence of horse evolution is among the most complete of any mammal line. From the tiny, multi-toed Eohippus to the strong, single-toed Equus, every major stage is documented in fossil beds across North America, Europe, and Asia. Today, genetic studies confirm the connections between ancient and modern horses. From forest-dwelling leaf-eaters to powerful plains grazers, the evolution of horses shows nature's power to adapt and specialize.